Hey, this is Adam and welcome to part two, which would be the final part of the uh, how to draw a barn tutorial. It doesn't sound like a, I don't know, a very exciting title, but <laughs> there we go. Um, so this is the second part in a master class on charcoal. And I always hesitate to say master class because it kind of sounds like patting yourself on the back. But this really does have some pretty complex techniques in it. And uh, as you saw in the first video, we spent a lot of time drawing individual leaves and, uh, and really working on things like the light reflecting off of the barn, you know, poking through. I, I call it a barn. It's probably a tractor shed. But we spent a lot of time uh, doing really fine details like that. And we aren't really even close to doing the most complex details here. So that's what we're going to get in today, and we're going to wrap this up. Um, we are going to get into some uh, some areas where I'm going to have to do some cutting and some fast forwarding because this is eight and a half to nine hours worth of video that we're going to be compressing down to around an hour and a half uh, because a lot of this is repetition. So let's get right into it, and you you can see I'm going to start working on the the planks the long uh, boards on the the face of this tractor shed the technique is relatively simple um, to start out with so first I'm just taking a q-tip and I've loaded that up with extra soft charcoal and I'm putting like a darkish mid-tone gray up and down the board and I'm using uh, up and down motions vertical motions whenever I lay this in because the grain of the wood runs up and down and so you want your strokes to run up and down so it gives the illusion of flow. So what I'm doing after that is I've loaded up a blending stump and I've gotten it pretty heavy with, with extra soft charcoal and I want to keep this pretty black. And I'm just going to start randomly dropping vertical lines through here soft with a light touch because we don't want these super black. But these are basically old stains and like rain marks that have darkened this over time and other parts have you know gotten lighter from being sun bleached but it's also embedded in a pretty decent shadow so once i get those laid in i'm going to come back in with hard charcoal and i'm going to start laying in the details of this wood and this is the actual grain where the the shadows are hard and the wood has started to split over time and then as I'm doing this, I'm going to, to kind of pay attention to, I'm not going to kind of pay attention, I'm going to pay some pretty deep attention to these areas where the board has these bleached out spots. This, this entire shading technique needs to be kind of lumpy. And so um, I'm kind of adding those in as I go. It needs to be kind of splotchy. And then we'll refine that over time. The biggest thing here, um, in order to make these boards look warped, is that I'm not going to shade uh, heavily all the way to the edges of these. They kind of curl inward. They're kind of concave. And so the edges of these are going to be brighter than the center. So anyway, I'm, I'm going to keep that in mind while I'm doing each of these boards. And we'll do a few of these to get the technique down. And then we'll start fast forwarding through a, you know, a lot of the others because this is just, again, we we look at the uh, the reference photo, we try to mimic that as best as we can, and then we move on to the next one using the same exact technique. And really all we're looking at in the, the reference photo is the general idea of how bright and how dark these splotches are. We don't need to completely mimic this entire board. Uh, we don't need every little piece of grain to be exactly right. We're just getting the idea of, of this down. So I've dropped in the little pieces of uh, grain with hard charcoal again. And then I'm going to go back in with a Tombow eraser. And I mention this a lot, and I will continue mentioning it through every video. A Tombow eraser is a 2.33 millimeter eraser that acts like a mechanical pencil. And that is one of the most important tools that I have. It's very sharp, and it's very cheap. So you can go on to Amazon and find those things for like 6 bucks. Um, and that includes that and the, the eraser itself. And I think it comes with like three refills, but it's extremely useful. But I, I just used that to drop in a few highlights. Um, and then I'm going to go back and with extra soft charcoal at the top and hard charcoal through the majority of this, 
I'm, um, I'm going to do the outline that happens between boards, the little crack that happens there. Now you'll notice that I'm not using a straight edge here, and I'm doing that on purpose. It's not out of laziness. The reason I'm not using a straight edge is because these boards have all warped over time. Every part of this barn has the roof, um, the boards, the little uh, stuff that had the little, I don't know what you call them, but they're, it's kind of like a tin covering along the edge of the roof that covers the, the boards, the wood. Anyway, all that stuff has warped over time, and so no edge is truly straight here. And if I'm not using a straight edge, then everything is going to look way more organic. Now, if I was doing a brand new building that was just built like two days ago, every edge would have a, a straight edge used on it. It would be sharp. There would be barely any rolls or bends in, in any of the angles. Uh, but this is just going to look so much better if it looks organic. So we've kind of finished that first board, and when I say finished, I don't mean finishing touches type of finished, but we've got a pretty darn good idea of how that should look, and then we're going to move on to the next one. The big thing here is I don't want to get trapped into spending an extremely long time on each of these boards and then getting them to the stage where they're basically you know, ready for finishing touches. I don't want to get them that detailed. I want to get the ideas of these in um, as detailed as I can get them without being finicky and then move on to the next one. Then we can modify those as we go because as we add more boards to the face of this, we're going to get more of an overall idea of how the face of this tractor shed as a whole feels. So, and that's, that's really important. So, I'm just going to do the same thing on this board as I did on the, the last one. I'm dropping in um, your, your basic background with a Q-tip. And then I'm going to spend a little bit more time on this one with a blending stump because it's a little bit darker than the first board. And we're starting to see kind of the cracks in the grain show up a little bit more. And also these boards start to get a little bit more clumpy with stains and wear and whatnot. So the idea here, and this is with every drawing, if you need your blending to have sharper edges to it and you need more stroke marks in there, it's better to use a blending stump. If you need a nice smooth gradient and you need to cover a ton of area, then Q-tips are the way to go. And I use a combination of both as you'll see in every drawing that I post here. So again, I've got the idea of that down uh, and I don't want to be finicky with it, so I'm just going to quickly drop in the next crack that happens between these boards. And one of the reasons that I'm using uh, hard charcoal instead of extra soft here is that these cracks aren't entirely black. They're a dark gray and whenever I go over this and try to darken this with q-tips or whatever later, I don't have to be super careful around the cracks. And what I mean by that is if I'm using extra soft charcoal and then I blend over that with the entire thing with a Q-tip or a paintbrush, the extra soft is much, much easier to move and much easier to smear because it's a softer charcoal. If I go over it with hard charcoal and just put more pressure and try to, to bring it blacker just by pressing down harder, the page holds on to dark charcoal uh, way better because it's harder. And then I can go over that with a Q-tip or paintbrush or whatever, and it doesn't smear quite as much, nearly as much. It's, it, it holds the paper really, really well, or the paper holds it really well. And so this is just kind of looking into the future and saying, I don't want this to smear everywhere, so let's use uh, charcoal that just holds the page better. Now I'm going to grab a kneaded eraser, and I'm just pressing down and slightly twisting in order to lift some of that charcoal off of that first board and create the illusion of these real splotchy light spots, these bleached out spots. And we're not going to leave it like that. We'll end up blending that all together because this kneaded eraser will leave edges that are, are harder than the rest. Uh, so we're going to fan those out a bit and smooth them out by just taking a somewhat clean blending stump and lightly blending over the entire board and that will take the edge off of what you just did with the kneaded eraser. And this is a lot of refinement here. So back to this other board, I'm just very, very lightly, I'm not, I'm not 
pressing down hard with that eraser, but I'm lightly adding a little bit of edge to the side of this board because again, the board curls outward. It, it, it's concave as we're facing it. And so I just want a little bit of a white edge on the edge of that um, to show that it curls in that way. So after I get that board done, we're just going to, um, and this is not like a do this, now do this. It's not a step-by-step how-to. But I just noticed that there are areas up here in the, the top shadow and along this main face uh, of the roof that need to be blended in a little bit better. Um, so I'm just going to, while I'm here and while I'm noticing it and while it's still fresh in my head, I'm just blending that out a little bit um, so that I don't forget it later. There are some things that if I leave until later, it's guaranteed I'm going to forget it by the end of the drawing and it's never going to get done. So I just take care of it while it's still fresh in my brain. But again, just like with all this stuff, before I get locked into it and I get too finicky, I'm going to go back to the area I was working on and, and continue with that. Because I don't, I don't want to sit here and, and be finicky with something for so long that I get locked into it and then the next thing you know, I'm stuck on this area for the next 30 minutes doing tiny little insignificant touch-ups. I, if you get locked into that, you can very easily burn out your motivation to finish this thing because then you're thinking, oh my God, it took me an hour to do one shadow. That means the rest of this drawing is going to take 50 hours to do. There's no reason to put yourself in that mindset. There's no reason to lock yourself into uh, boredom because that's going to be a killer. So anyway, let's get uh, back to this board and again, same exact technique. I'm going to start working on the splotchiness and just kind of laying in that base coat with a Q-tip using up and down motions. Now on this one there's a little section where you can tell this this barn or tractor shed had a sliding door on it at one point, I'm assuming, um, which is what left that little horizontal mark that I left white up there. And if you look at the reference photo, that stretches across most of the, le the left-hand section of the barn. I'm leaving that white right now because I can always blend over the top of that with a dirty stump or a dirty Q-tip later, and it'll make it look like that, that little part has faded out. And so I'm just leaving it now, and then we'll touch it up here in just a little bit. But I, I need it to exist so that um, I don't forget it's there, and so I don't have to go back in with an eraser later and remove charcoal. For me, it's always better to add charcoal than to remove charcoal. So just exactly like the first two boards, we're laying in that base. Um, we'll end up going back with a hard charcoal and adding in the little details, the little cracks and the grain of the wood and whatnot. And then uh, once we touch that up a bit, we'll move on to the next board. It's not a complicated process. Now one thing we will be doing is each of these boards has saw marks. You can tell where they've used like a, a big table saw or whatever to rip these things down uh, to size. And those are super easy to put in, but everyone I've showed this drawing to in real life has um, been blown away by the saw marks even though they took less time to do than everything else in pretty much the whole drawing. And we'll get to that here in a minute. Those fine little goofy details like that that take no effort oftentimes end up being the thing that people notice the most. And so I, I make sure that I put those things in there. So right now I'm just going to grab hard charcoal and I'm very lightly going over uh, the, the second board here. And I, I'm really going light here because I don't want big dark marks but I'm just kind of randomly throwing in vertical grain lines throughout this. And that's just adding a little bit more detail. They always say on this old house, if you've never watched that show, it's a great show. It's worth watching. But they always say money's in the detail. Now this is also one of the areas where 
um, it's a rare occasion where I use the sharpest point of the pencil to put these lines in because these are very, very thin lines. And the temptation here is going to be to press hard, but um, you really shouldn't. The, these things should be subtle. If you press too hard, it's just it's going to look like a child went over your drawing and just started <laughs> making up and down scribbles, and it's not going to look good. Allow your drawings to have some subtlety to them. The details exist, but you kind of have to look in order to, to see some of those. I guess that's one of the things that I... I really like doing in my drawings is I, I like it whenever a customer gets the drawing and then uh, every once in a while they'll contact me like two weeks later and say I never noticed this in the drawing before but I can't believe those things existed and I just looked right over the top of them. It means they're discovering new things about the drawing and it gives them uh, reasons to go back to it over time and it just prolongs the enjoyment because over time you're going to get used to something like this and it's just going to be another thing that hangs on your wall and you're going to kind of forget about it. But if you're coming back to it and noticing new things all the time, then it, it kind of prolongs the enjoyment and gives them new things to discover over time. I really like that. So right here I'm starting to add the first of the saw marks and all I'm doing is very, very lightly making up and down scrubbing motions, barely touching the paper, and I'm making sure they all curve in the same direction. And we're not going to add a ton of those in. They, they just exist in hit and miss spots. But look how subtle that is. It barely exists. But that's the thing that, you know, the people who have seen this in real life, their, their eyes go right to that. And that's the thing that blows them away. You know, how, how long did it take you to get that tiny little detail in there? Well, it took about a minute. It, it really took no time at all. <laughs> I don't want to tell them that. I should tell them it took me seven hours to get that to look that intricate, but it didn't. Now we're going to the second board. We're going to add a few little scribble saw marks in there too. And not all of these boards have those saw marks, and they don't go all the way up and down the board. Some of them have worn off over time. Uh, the ones that do appear uh, they only appear because they've been stained over time. They've, you know, collected some dirt. You've got other parts that have bleached out so they no longer exist or can't be seen in that area. So you've only got just a few little splotches where those saw marks appear. And I, I think that's part of the thing that makes it look so cool. Again, don't get too into this. I mean, get get it to where you're fine with it. Get it to where you like it. But then make your touch-ups and then move on. Don't get stuck in this. Because you're going to look at the rest of this paper and think, Oh my God, I've got 75% of this paper still to draw on. That, that, there, that nothing exists. Maybe less than that, 50%. But you're going to look at that and think, I just took an hour to do three boards or whatever. Even though in reality you didn't. What are we at? 18 minutes in the video? took me 18 minutes to do these three boards, but if I spend an hour on them, I'm going to look at the rest of that and think, oh my god, this is going to take days. And keeping up that motivation is really, really important. Don't psych yourself out. So let's uh, blast through this next part, because all of this is exactly what we've just done on these three boards. We're just repeating the process and kind of looking at the reference photo and making sure that we, in general, have the same kind of level of darkness, um, that we have you know, the same level of light splots, splotches coming out where they need to be. Um, and we don't have to worry, like right now this is too light compared to the reference photo. What I'm doing here is it needs to be darkened up. But there's an extremely simple technique that we're going to use to darken this entire thing without getting tedious with it at the very end of the drawing. So I'm not worried about going over all these boards again and making sure we you know, get the exact tone and the exact uh, contrast down. We can do that at the end of the drawing with a paintbrush and a little bit of charcoal powder. Or if you don't have charcoal powder, um, you can use the, the old scribble you know, or scrub some uh, some extra soft charcoal on scrap paper and use that with your paintbrush. But we'll get to that a little bit later. 
Now the other thing is not all these boards are the same thickness or the same width and so we're making sure that we have a couple boards that were thrown in there. You know, this was a really rough piece that was put together. It wasn't done by a professional architect. It was built by a farmer, you know, who needed a place to store whatever, his tractors or his dead bodies, <laughs> whatever he needed to draw or to, to store. That was what was in there. And he didn't hire somebody to make a perfect building. So now is where these boards are going to start ending. Uh, the top half of this has two boards instead of one long board that, that's uh, constructed that way. So all I did was make, you know, use hard charcoal and make a little separation there. Now we're going to slow things back down because this board is kind of important. Um, so I've made a separation between these two boards. There's one on the top and one on the bottom, but they're done in basically the same type of measurements. And so once I get that in there, I'm going to take my blending stump and I'm going to start uh, putting in saw marks in a different way. I'm adding the saw marks with the blending stump because these are a little bit softer and they're a little bit more faded out than the other ones. And I'm going to start adding in things like long splits in the wood. Um, it's a little bit rougher. It's got a little bit more curve to it. And so instead of going in with a Q-tip like I normally do, I'm going to actually start adding detail with a blending stump and then I can refine that with a pencil a little bit later. It's almost the same exact technique. It's just a slightly different way of doing it. And you'll, you'll learn those things from feel over time. You'll look at a drawing and, and without even thinking about it, you won't just say, okay, the best tool to use would be a blending stump in this situation. You won't think that at all. You'll just grab a blending stump because you know that's what is best. So now that I've got these uh, basics laid in, I'm going to grab hard charcoal again. We're going to start putting some splits in that board, and there's nothing special there. I just draw a thin line going from the top you know, down vertically. And then I'm going to start putting in a few saw marks here and there. I want to start working on the uh, crack that happens between these two boards. And the crack here isn't as dark as the rest of them. So that's a really important thing to keep in mind too. Not all of these cracks are exactly the same level of darkness. They're not the same thickness. They don't have the same uh, bow or you know wave to them because of the warping. They're all different. So make sure you vary that up a little bit from board to board to board. You need to know when to kind of pull back. So like, in other words, if I, if I were to go back into the splits of this board and I end up drawing those in really dark, it's going to eventually look like a comic book type drawing because typically in those, most of the lines are the same value, the same levels of uh, blackness, and the, you know it's got the same pressure used or whatever. And that's fine for that style of art, but for realism, uh, when I'm working on the front of the, the face of this barn, the big thing I need is variance. Um, because the boards have shifted over time, and some of them sit back a little further, some of them sit forward a little further. And since we're looking from the left-hand side to the right, it means that the ones that come out a little bit are going to obscure the, the cracks between boards a little bit more. The ones that sit back a ways, the cracks are typically going to be a little bit more defined and it's going to make some of the cracks look really black and some of them look like they don't even exist. So I'm going back into this board again, adding my little saw marks. Again, sporadically, just kind of throwing them in here and there, but I'm making sure they're uniform. Since that part was machine made, those are going to, the spacing on those uh, little saw marks are going to be a little bit more uniform. Also, my mic is strapped to, or not strapped, but clipped to my chest. It's like one of those lapel mics. And my stomach keeps growling even though I'm not hungry. So I'm hoping this video is not just racked with stomach growls over the top <laughs> of me talking. <laughs> because it's going to get real dumb real fast if that happens.
Now we're going to take that Tombow eraser and start cleaning up the edges of this. And that's just to make it a little bit sharper. Now we don't have to do that because this section that we're going to draw here in just a little bit, the opening of this barn, is going to be jet black. And so we could, we could uh, shade right over the top of the little fuzzy marks or the parts where we scrubbed outside the lines. Um, but I like for it to look perfect on the edges before I move on just so I don't look at it and think that's a thing I need to fix. So now in between each of those saw marks you saw me very lightly kind of touching and pulling between them and that's just to lighten up the areas between the saw marks um, and make them stand out a little bit more. It gives you a little bit of contrast and makes them pop out a bit better than they did. I don't spend a lot of time on that. That was like a two second, three second ordeal but you'll see me go back occasionally. I'll grab a Tombow eraser and just kind of poke out little sections between the saw marks in order to make them stand out a bit better. So now this part I am being a little bit finicky on to add in a little bit more grain along these uh, small boards that happen along here and I'm kind of touching up cracks and stuff um, and then we're going to bounce back up into that big, curly, really warped board and add a few lines of grain in there. Uh, and that's just because I, I know I'm getting ready to get into another section of this drawing where we're going to be repeating the process, but we're also getting more of a, the big picture in place. We're going to be able to see the, the face of the barn as a whole rather than, you know, one board at a time sort of deal. Well, by the way, I, I did the same thing I was just talking about, except instead of using a Tombow eraser, I just flattened out a section of the kneaded eraser and pressed straight down with kind of like using it like a razor's edge. But I was doing the same thing I was talking about where we're just lightening up the sections between the saw marks in order to make them pop out a little bit better. It's just another method to do the same exact thing. The difference between the Tombow eraser and the kneaded eraser though when you do that is the kneaded eraser tends to give you softer lines, softer erase marks. The Tombow gives you really hard edge lines and very thin sharp lines. And so I just did that with the kneaded eraser because that was a thing where I needed softer marks. So let's blast through this next part um, because as you can see right there, I lost about an hour, maybe two hours worth of video. Now don't worry about wondering how I got the light and the shadow on that top right part to look that way, because we're going to be doing that again in a minute in an area where I didn't lose video. And this is just a hazard of, you know, having a really bad camera. And I, I mention it in most of my videos. I will not be able to get a new camera until I get a ton of patrons. I, I just can't afford it. There's no way. Um, or maybe I, some rich person follows me and donates a camera to me. It's like it's the only way I'm going to get past these problems. Fortunately, again, I, I will be doing more light work on the section I'm working on right now to show you how I got that look with the uh, curved boards and the, the little shadows there. So I'm just dropping in with a blending stump that little board and then I'm going to clean up the ed edges with a Tombow eraser and then I'm going to do the same thing here as what I did before um, on all the other boards except with this I'm going to start showing you how I created the little shadows and differentiated between light and dark here and I'm also adding in uh, some of these really defined large cracks in these boards. Um, I'm doing that with hard charcoal and there's no real reason that I'm doing that first. I could easily drop all that stuff in, uh, you know, the way I do normally with a blending stump or a Q-tip and then add those later. But since I'm using hard charcoal, I know that I don't have to worry about smearing this all over the place. So I'm just adding them in now in order to give myself mentally uh, an idea of the shape and where certain boards end and where these cracks exist. I'm not too worried about, you know, things like a specific order to draw them in. And I guess there's kind of a lesson here that you, you don't have to, whenever you're doing drawings like this, you, you don't have to, to say to yourself, here's the exact way to do this thing. 
And if I do it in another order, it's going to look weird or it's going to you know, mess up the drawing. That's not always the case. Um, be a little bit loose with your drawing because part of drawings is fixing mistakes. And in fact, I think it's one of the biggest parts of drawing. But another big part of this is uh, being comfortable with the, the strokes you make and um, when you make them. So I'm totally fine with throwing stuff like that in first. I, I will never do it with soft, soft charcoal first because that will smear all over the place. But don't get yourself locked into the mentality, though, that you have to do things in a very specific order because this is the way it's done sort of thing. That's No, you're locking yourself into just something that you shouldn't be locking yourself into mentally. So I've got those little things added in. I'm going to go back with the blending stump again and start adding in some of the backgrounds and darkening up these areas and lightening up other areas. And then very quickly here in just a, a second, I'm going to start adding in some of these shadows. And again, this is another section where you would think that the, the quote unquote correct way to do it would be to put in the background first and then add the shadows over the top of them and it's just not necessarily true do whatever you're comfortable with at this particular point i'm more comfortable adding the shadows first and then the background later and that's that's totally fine now the shadows that we will be adding are coming from a section of the drawing that we actually haven't done yet and it's the part of the roof, you can see on the right hand side of the roof, it starts breaking up and you'll get these individual boards and planks that kind of show through. Um, those are casting shadows down onto the barn. And then those shadows are kind of warped by um, the boards themselves that have become curly over time. I haven't drawn in those planks yet. And so these shadows will look like they're coming out of nowhere. But that, that's where they're coming out of is these ones that I haven't drawn in quite yet. Now here I'm making a knot hole in the middle of this wood and all I've done is just draw a little irregular shape in the middle with hard charcoal and then I'm uh, blending in or shading in with a blending stump the background around it and I've made the the background darker as I get around the knot hole but then leaving a ring of white around it. And that's a real easy way to make a, a knot hole look real because it, it's usually warped. The wood is harder around the area so it doesn't catch stain quite as the same way as the rest of the wood. So that's just a quick way. I drop it in a little dot with hard charcoal and then shade around it and then just shade that ring around the outside. And that is really like the, the only detail you really need to put in. We can modify that and, you know, make it sharper or whatever with a hard charcoal in just a bit. But for right now, that's all I need in order to make that look like a knot hole exists there. Notice how warped the uh, cracks are around this area too. They just snake all over the place. So we're going to go back in with hard charcoal. And you'll notice that that I, I bounce between two different types of hard charcoal. This pencil that I use right here is longer and then every once in a while I'll use a shorter one um, that's also hard charcoal. They're the same exact, I don't know the word to use here, they're the same exact grade of charcoal or whatever, they're HB. Um, the difference is not all hard charcoal is made the same. It's made by the same company, it's the same grade or whatever, um, but if you draw with these long enough, you'll notice that one pencil will give you a much darker line than the other and use that to your advantage. So what I always do is I, I draw a little bit with each of those so that I know which one makes a darker line. And that way I'm not having to go to you know a medium type pencil or I'm not having to manipulate my pressure in order to achieve a certain darkness of line. I'll just bounce back and forth between two different types um, of hard charcoal. And it's just a, a flaw in the manufacturing process, or not really even a flaw. It's just the way hard charcoal acts. You'll never get two that are exactly the same shade of black or gray. 
But uh, anyway, I'm using that to, uh, to drop in the same exact way we've done with every other board. So let's kind of blast through this. I'm going to start dropping in the interior of the, the barn a little bit just to show those, those boards you can see through them. And now we're going to go back up and start working on the light and dark with the, uh, the shadows and light reflections up here at the top. So what I'm doing is I've grabbed a blending stump and it's pretty dirty. I've got a lot of extra soft charcoal on this and I'm going to drop in a, a mid-tone gray background and all I'm doing is going over that um, in the direction that the shadow flows just a little bit darker than the background and that's literally it. I'm just making sure that those little shadows that go over the top of that are a little bit darker than the background and all I'm doing is keeping in mind where I want those shadows to fall. Now the big thing here is making sure that there's a pretty big difference between um, the light and darkness so that those shadows do pop out. Otherwise it's going to be really easy for those to blend into the background and they won't become a feature. So right here is what I was talking about earlier. I drop the back or the uh, shadow itself first and then I start working on the background second. And you can do that in either order. You can drop in the background first and then drop the shadow over the top of it. The big thing there is just reinforcing the point. There is no step-by-step -step way to do this. It's You do it in whatever way you're, more, you're the most comfortable with. Quick drink of tea, my mouth is getting dry. I go through a lot of tea a day. So before I get too heavy into this, I want to go back in and clean up the edges of this board. And I want to start adding in some of the, um, the finer details, you know, the little pieces of grain. The, the edge has a, a little darker shadow than the rest of it. So I'm just kind of cleaning that up a little bit and, and making it sharp. And then we're going to speed through because we're just continuing that process. Laying in background, throwing in grain, you know, modifying as we go along. Now let's jump back up and start getting deeper into these shadows. I'm going to drop another one on top. Now notice that I did this one the opposite way as I did the first. The first long shadow, I put the shadow in first and then shaded the background second. This one I've got the background laid in and I'm going to put the shadow in second. Again, either way works. It's what I'm comfortable doing in the moment. But notice how much of a difference there is between that little diagonal shadow versus the background. It's not so different that the shadow is black and the background's white. We don't want that much of a difference. But we want enough of a difference for the eyes to be almost startled by, by those shadows that appear there. That they'll definitely pick them out. I'm going to start pulling those shadows up into the new areas. And here in a bit we'll end up taking an eraser and kind of straightening these things out a little bit. But right now I'm just putting the ideas of them. I, I think if there's one thing you can take away from my style of drawing is don't be afraid to throw something in that isn't perfect right off the bat. We can perfect the, these things later. Right now we just want them in and then we can modify them as we go. So those shadows right now, look how clumpy those are. I've got weird bends in them. Um, one piece of the shadow is darker than the other. It's just, it's a mess right now. But we have the basic idea of those in there and modifying it is 50% of what you're going to be doing with charcoal and graphite pencil work. You can see me cleaning it up right here. Straightening out the bend, leaving a tiny bit of a bend in there because the boards themselves bend. And I'm going in to add yet another shadow. Goes all the way up to the edge. Now you can start to see if you stop looking at just this section. And start looking at the barn as an over or the tractor shed as an overall entity. Those shadows that I just laid in will stick out like a sore thumb. If you look at just this section, 
it's almost kind of hard to pick out those shadows because they're in such a weird area and you don't know where the light stops and the shadows begin as you know from an overall perspective uh, but once we get this whole thing in place you're going to be able to tell that there's a big section of this tractor shed that gets hit by light and the rest of it is all covered in shadows part of that illusion is created by the four boards at the top middle of the uh, the opening that curve way that you know that curl way way out you can tell there's a big section of light there um, so you, you do have to kind of keep that in mind um, the overall aesthetic of this so anyway uh, I'm rambling again so now that we've got those laid in I can go back in with a combination of hard charcoal there's the short pencil again um, hard charcoal Tombow eraser and whatever and just start adding in the grain of the wood then I'm going to bounce up to where you can see me doing now which is adding the last of those little broken planks and broken boards from the roof now these shadows are going to start to make more sense you can do it in reverse you can add those first then add the shadows later it's totally up to you whatever you're comfortable with then we'll grab that hard charcoal and go back into each of these boards add a few uh, knot holes add some breaks and some grain um, we'll kind of darken certain shadows and we're, this is all refinement this is all stuff that you've seen me doing so far on every other board I'm doing the same exact thing here as I did on all the rest of them now we're gonna bounce up into the tree we're gonna finish off the rest of this the same way we did in the first video these leaves don't have as much detail into them so I'm just dropping them in with a blending stump I'll drop in the uh, the rest of the branches with hard charcoal but the big thing here is as I go to the right of the page we're putting less and less uh, contrast into this we're smoothing it out and making it much much lighter than the rest of the tree and that's on purpose because you can see in the original photo it has the same sort of effect there where it kind of washes out and I really like the way that effect comes off and I, th I thought it would look good in the drawing version of this so as we go to the right I'm just lightening the leaves not putting as much contrast into them I'm doing the same thing with the actual branches and sticks that come across but I need to make sure that if there's any of these uh, clumps of leaves that are further in shadow I do need occasional clumps that are a little bit darker than the rest of them so you can see me dropping in occasional little clumps that are darker and then the washed out ones that happen around it you need that to, to break that up and make it not as flat all I'm doing is just making little marks with a blending stump no detail there at all just little splotches and now if you're if you haven't watched the first video please go back and watch it because I go into much much more detail in the first video showing how I do these leaves and in fact the majority of the first video is is about the leaves but look how cool that looks when that washes out as it goes over the barn now here's where you're going to need some patience if you can't do this you're you're out of luck <laughs> you're not going to be able to do a drawing like this you have to have the patience to draw around every single leaf in this clump up to a certain point these are the most important leaves in the entire drawing these are the ones that poke out over the top of the tractor shed and so we need a, an extreme contrast between the leaves that are organic and still alive and growing versus the flat dying nature of that barn we need that life in order to break up the decay and then the organic curves and stuff that happen within these leaves to contrast against the flat dimensions of this uh, this tractor shed so in order to pull that off we have to make these leaves very noticeable and very prominent so what I'm doing is I'm drawing a rough outline around each of these leaves kind of lightly I don't have to worry about the, the outline showing up in the finished product because we're going to be blending those out and making them disappear but for right now I'm drawing an outline of kind of the silhouette of all these leaves and then we're going to draw the barn in behind them leaving what you already kind of see with the leaves along the roof and along the top part of that side of the barn 
Here, we'll fast forward through it so you can see. There we go. There's, a, there's now an outline of the silhouette of the side of this bush. So all we're going to do is go back in with extra soft charcoal because this stuff is jet black behind here. And we're just going to do it like we're a kid coloring in a coloring book. We're going to stay inside the lines. We're going to fill this in with some jet black. And then whenever we're done with this and we get this section you know, the way we like it, we just blend out all these pinholes with a blending stump. It's easy peasy, kneesy, beasy. I don't, I'm, I don't know that phrase. I, I know it's easy peasy, lemon squeezy or something like that, but I don't know where it comes from and it's a weird phrase. And why am I rambling about that phrase? I'm so sorry. So we're going to blend this out with a blending stump and notice how dark that gets whenever we're taking away these pinholes. just leaving the silhouette of the leaves above them. And when we get into that part, when we start doing individual leaves, that's the part where you're really going to need the most patience in this whole drawing. You know what, I'm going to back that up. Actually, there's one other section that's going to require even more patience, but it's the same idea. It's when we get to the plants that are in the opening of that uh, tractor shed those things are extremely detailed and needs a real steady hand and a lot of patience. Now I'm going to do the same thing down here on the bottom. I'm just dropping in some really dark pencil, but I'm leaving the leaves white. It looks kind of cool here in a minute whenever I get a lot of this barn laid in. Uh, it'll make that whole bush look like I've just taken a stencil and laid it over the top of a finished drawing. It's kind of funny looking. Okay, so all I'm doing is grabbing that extra soft charcoal that we've just laid down there and using it um, to fill in the rest. So all I'm doing is grabbing that and pulling up with a blending stump and it's going to move that charcoal around. I'm going to do the same thing here. Real dirty blending stump. Just uh, stop at the edges of the leaves, pull down and blend it all together. Now right now this is it's not going to be much darker than the face of the tractor shed but we will darken this up significantly, pretty dramatically at the end of the drawing. I'm not too worried about getting the exact shades of uh, black and gray correct here. I'm more interested in making sure that the flow of that grain is correct, the shapes are correct, and that we get it basically filled in because my main goal here is filling in that background part in order to make the leaves pop forward. What we'll do toward the end of this drawing is I will grab charcoal powder and a paintbrush and go over this entire, not just the this side that we're working on, but the face of the barn as well and increase the values of these shadows by about double. Um, and all of a sudden it will, the light and, uh, and the shadows that appear in this thing will pop out like crazy and it really is mind blowing how, how much it changes the whole aesthetic of this piece. But again, right now, we'll get to that later. Uh, right now, I'm just continuing doing the, the background layer here, leaving the leaves white, and just filling in this background. No pencils are used here. If I use pencils here, it's going to look too grainy. You're going to see the stroke marks, and it's just going to look uh, too cartoony. I've added a little bit more black there to make it look like that shadow has shape rather than having a single gradient that goes from solid black and steadily goes up to you know a, a mid-tone or lighter gray those shadows happen in clumps because the bush is clumpy now what I'm doing here isn't super necessary but I'm doing it anyway I'm just going on the inside of each of these leaves and I'm erasing away any overlapping pencil marks so that these leaves have a, a much sharper shape to them. 
Now the leaves that are in the background, I don't really worry about those too much because those uh, purposely have less detail to them. Even the ones that we spent all that time um, on in the crotch of that tree don't have nearly as much detail as the ones we're working on here. And so I'm, I'm taking a lot of care to make these things sharp and to make sure that they, they are their own entities and that they're really noticeable as compared to every other leaf in the, the whole drawing. Now I'll go back into the wood here and I'm not going to put a massive amount of detail into you know, the cracks and the, the grain and all that, but I do need it to exist. I, I know we're going to darken this up later, but I do need some detail to exist here because the leaves themselves are going to have a ton of detail and it would just look weird if one section was really detailed and then the stuff that's behind it has none. It would just look like I, it would look like I was lazy and just didn't bother with that. So let's start fast forwarding again because right now we're going to do the same thing we just did except for these areas that are that I'm drawing right here and shading that are really black are just instead of the barn being behind those leaves it's the um, shadows that are embedded within the bush so it's just jet black. So we're going to slow it back down and the reason I'm slowing down here is because we're doing exactly what we just did except now we're going to start adding the very first of the the really detailed individual leaves here and I'm not looking not really looking at the reference photo here I'm deciding as an artist where I want those leaves to be and what directions I want them to go directions plural you do not want all these leaves facing the same direction it will look too uniform and it'll make it look like you have no idea what you're doing Nature is more chaotic than that. It's, um, so I want these to be, in general, pointing the same direction. Um, so as an overall whole, the bush flows in a specific direction. But individual leaves will often point in different directions. So in other words, I may have them all facing to the right, but one will be at a 45 degree angle, one will be at a 30 degree, one will be 180 degrees just flat. Um, so I need those angles to be more chaotic. So the reason I'm slowing down here is I'm going to continue doing what I was doing where I'm leaving you know, white uh, negative space there, but I'm also going to start giving each of these individual leaves their own shadow. So I'm going to start at the base of the leaves once I get this background blended in, and I'm going to make sure that the base of the leaf that attaches to the stem is darker than the tip of the leaf. And we're going to do that with a really simple single pull gradient meaning I'm going to start at the base and just pull down one time and that's going to make the the base of that darker and it's going to uh, pull off charcoal as I make the swipe making the tip of the leaf lighter and what that's going to do is it's going to make it look like it has shadow at the base and light at the tip it's going to make a uh, the leaf look curved the way a leaf should look now the ones that are in side these dark areas, the leaves that are on a secondary layer that, that's back deeper in the bush. I don't have to worry about those quite as much. I can make those a flat gray and it would be fine, but definitely the ones that happen on the outer edge of the bush need to have their own gradient to give the illusion that they curve. We're going to do the same thing up here at the top got a couple leaves that poke out so I'm going to leave those white. I'm going to blend in the background area to get rid of those pinholes and pencil marks. And we're going to go back into this first area and start blending out with tiny little gradients on every single leaf. So you see what I mean about patience on this area? There's no shortcut to this. I'm doing every leaf. Now as we go to the left, when we get right around the area that's uh, around the tree trunk itself, we're going to have a different story there. Um, the leaves there start to lose a little bit of detail because we're going into an area that purposely has less detail. So we won't have to necessarily do every leaf one at a time here or in that section, um, but that will provide the contrast 
that will make the leaves we're currently working on look more realistic by comparison and it'll make them pop out a lot more. So we'll get to that when we get to it. But let's fast forward through this because this is all I'm doing here. I'm doing individual leaves. I'm In fact, I've, I've jumped to a part where I'm making the leaves by making a single stroke with a blending stump with no outline. Then I go back in with hard charcoal and I fill in these little darker shadows where the leaves connect to each other. So if there's a leaf that overlaps more leaves, I'll put a darker shadow on the bottom ones. Now, if I were to do this in real time, and at some point I may start doing full-blown, you know, real-time videos that are 10 hours long or whatever, uh, that's further down the line because my internet has a data cap and I have to make enough money in order to pay for that whenever I go over it, which will definitely happen if I'm doing 10 hour videos. Uh, if I were to do this um, in real time, this would be the majority of the video. This is where I spend all my time is doing these little clumps of leaves. So yeah, we're gonna blast through it as best we can. But even in fast motion, you can see how I'm doing each of these, right? It's I'm varying the different gradients, making some gradients darker and then get lighter as we go to the outside clumps. Also remember that light is poking through the tree above it. So notice on the roof how we've got all those little spots of light that appear everywhere, almost like a disco ball. The same thing's going to happen with these leaves, only not quite as dramatic as that. So you can take some leaves and some clumps of leaves and make them really bright and not even really put any gradient at all on them. You can make them bright white and it'll still look natural because we know that there's sun poking through that tree and lighting up a ton of the, uh, the leaves below it. Now let's slow it down here because this is important but easy. This is so easy over here. <laughs> this is where the texture changes because there's a different type of bush behind the really uh, detailed one this one has much smaller leaves and they are much more compact it's almost like a just a little thin leaf bush back here and all i'm doing is taking hard charcoal or you could use extra soft if you want and just start putting in tight circles and just shaping those so there's going to be a part in a minute where i get so into this it looks like i'm drawing in fast motion but i'm really not i'm just putting in there it is no i'm just kidding that's fast motion um I'm just drawing in these little circles, then I'm going to go back with a blending stump and basically I'm just touching and pulling almost like I'm making check marks. I'm letting that blending stump bounce all over the paper because I don't want to totally remove the pencil marks from this area. I need a little bit of those pencil marks to stay in in order to give that texture. So all I'm doing is I'm making the blending motions as if I were scrubbing it uh, with the, the with the, with the uh, blending stump in contact with the paper all the time, except instead of doing that, I'm bouncing it up and down while making those motions, and that's what gives that illusion of the the leaves. Let's jump back into fast motion again because we are going back into the tedious part. More leaves, individual leaves, one at a time. Little gradients going different directions. Occasionally I'll throw down a jet black area where the bush has these little breaks and you can see deeper into it. That's up to you as an artist. I mean, if you want to mimic the reference photo entirely, you feel free. We're going to throw in another type of bush there. That's that one we were working on that's got thinner leaves. And now we're going to switch um, to extra soft charcoal whenever we get to the middle of this section and that is going to be almost entirely just one big solid mass of black. I'm going to slowly ease that into more detailed leaves as we go from the left to the right and then we're going to ease off of um, detail as we go from the right to the left. Now notice how that clump, it's got individual little gradients and it gets darker in the middle and in the back. It gets lighter toward the tip of the leaves. 
We just need to keep that in mind as we're doing each of these. Now that bush that we've been working on is basically going to end. We're going to start filling in with extra soft charcoal in the middle, leaving just a couple small little holes here and there where light's poking through. Blend it all out and then make sure we wrap up um, that transition from that jet black section into the detailed leaves. Now one of the things I do there that I think I may go into in just a bit is I'll go back with a Tombow eraser and erase in some brighter details there that look like um, little extra branches that go over the top. I'm not going to slow down on the inside of this barn just yet. Um, I will whenever we get to a certain area here in just a bit because this is simple. This is um, black lines for the deepest shadows, uh, dark mid-tones for the uh, highlighted areas, and all we're doing is coloring like it's a coloring book. There is no special technique to this at all. If you have trouble doing parts like this, um, this I, I think you just will need more practice to pull it off. This may not be the video for you if you're having trouble doing this real simple thing here because it's all we're doing is drawing rectangles and filling them in and looking at the reference photo to see where those things go. Now one thing I will say is I do this too light to begin with, so I, I do go back and darken it up later. Now we're going to slow down because this is the important part. We're going to do the same thing here as we did on the bushes to the left. We're going to draw the background there and then we're going to leave the leaves white because we're doing the same exact technique. We're going to leave negative space on those plants. We're going to draw the background in and then we can go back into the plants later and, and define those with shadows and refinement. But right now, all I'm doing is drawing in the background dark areas and leaving the plants alone, leaving a white silhouette behind. These are the most difficult plants to do in the entire drawing and probably the most uh, complex thing to draw in the entire drawing because these plants are really sharp focus. I can't cheat. I can't, you know, fake detail here because they are smack dab in the middle of the biggest focal point in the whole drawing. So the, in fact, these plants will become focal points. So I really need to draw the background in, leave the plants alone, and then we'll get into extremely fine detail uh, later whenever we go to refine those things. You can see how careful I am along the edges of these plants. These are these white spots are leaves that pop out and cover the background area. And they'll become way way more apparent here in just a little bit uh, whenever I start doing the bulk of the uh, the opening in the barn. These other plants will stick out like a sore thumb.
All right, now we are getting into the extremely fine details. So I'm worried about the overall outer shape of each of these little plants that sticks out over the top of this opening. And so I'm not, I'm not worried about the interiors because I know that those are things we can modify later. So in order to achieve this outer silhouette, all I have to do is make some horizontal or diagonal marks on the outside and that will give me the shape and the flow of each of these leaves. Then I can draw the background behind it. Then whenever we go to do some modification and some refinement on this, I can worry about the interior of these later. But all I'm worried about right here is the outer shape of each of these. So you'll see with each one, I'm just drawing some very basic um, horizontal and diagonal lines that are in between each of these little sets of leaves. No detail there at all. But you can tell overall, whenever you're looking at the opening and just the plants as a group, you can already tell that they have their own shape. You can almost tell right now what they are, even without the background being in place. So I want to be real, real careful with, with each of these. I don't, again, I, I don't need to get them exactly the way they look in the reference photo. But I, I want to get them kind of close, and I at least want those shapes to exist in, a, in an, a visually appealing way. So I'm kind of getting close to what they are in the reference photo. I'm just not mimicking it, mimicking it entirely. So don't get caught up in looking at the reference photo and trying to make these groups of leaves or individual leaves exactly the way they appear in the original. We're not going for crazy hyper-realism here. We're going for photorealism, and we can manipulate that the way we want as an artist. If I was going for total duplication, um, I, I would spend hundreds of hours on this drawing, and we would not be doing the same thing we're doing here. We would be zooming way in and drawing basically a centimeter at a time. Uh, right here, we're just dropping in the ideas of these, and then we can work on making them look really realistic with our shading techniques and not by trying to completely duplicate the original photo. Now, once we get all these in place, we're going to start working on the background that lies behind those. And once we start that, um, it's, it's a pretty easy process. We're just filling that in and then not doing anything where the plants exist. We're, we're just going to be shading in those areas as if the, that section that we just roped off didn't exist, and we're going to leave that totally negative space. Now again, in this section of the barn, on the interior especially, um, I'm still not using a straight edge, and I'm not going to on any part of this drawing, because these are all rough cut boards. These are all like 4x4s that hold this together, uh, two by fours that just, you know, the farmer and a friend probably cut. They're not exactly measured out. And over time, they warp and they bend and they have rough cut edges and they're, they're not perfect. And I don't want them to be perfect here. I want the more imperfect these look, well, I won't, I won't go that far. But if these look imperfect, it's going to make the drawing feel organic. And that's the way I, I want this whole thing to feel. I want it to feel aged and imperfect. I think if you broke out a ruler here and you start doing perfectly straight edges on all this, it's going to look too clean and too manufactured and you're going to lose some of the feeling of age within this, uh, this, this piece. Now all this stuff is just really you know, quick outlines um, just to get basic things in place. I'm taking my time with them, but um, once we get those in place, it's just a matter of picking out all the parts that are black and filling it in with extra soft then all the parts that are uh, dark gray or like a dark mid-tone type gray, just filling it in with either hard charcoal or just a flat out blending stump. It's super simple stuff. By the time we're done with this, a ton of this stuff that we've outlined is just going to disappear right into the background. We just need those things to subtly exist so that they look like they're, they're bathed in really black, dark shadow. 
Now again, the biggest part through here is making sure we leave the plants alone. Now the background over here on the right is the simplest stuff to put in beside the grass, besides the grass. Um, I'm just basically putting in little marks and scratches that are in the basic shape of like corn or grass or whatever, and then blending that away with a blending stump or a Q-tip. I want no detail to be there at all. That should be so little detail it looks like you just scratched it in in like a minute, which is basically what you're going to be doing. Because look how much, look how real it makes the barn in comparison with those scratch marks on the right. Don't be afraid to lose detail. Okay, so now we're going to get into the grass along here. And this is uh, pretty simple. I'm just finishing off the leaves and uh, finishing out the shape of those bushes. Now let's remove the, um, the reference photo. We don't need that there anymore. If you, we don't know what the reference photo looks like by now, we're in trouble because uh, we've been staring at it at this point for about 15 hours in real time um, and, and about oh uh, what will we say four hours in vi actual video time if you watched them both so anyway uh, we're going into the grass and I'm, I'm starting to put in some detail grass here where I'm just using kind of up and down vertical strokes to put in this clump of grass but I'm going to change that technique here in just a bit the only reason I'm doing that there is because the foot of my barn or the base of my barn doesn't come down far enough. So I'm putting that grass as kind of a landmark and then I'm going to pull that um, the bottom part of the base of that barn down to meet that grass here in just a little bit. But I need that grass to be there as a landmark to show me how far to come down with the barn. So I'm just going to start filling in <clears throat> all this area with extra soft charcoal to finish out the bush. Then I'm going to take a Q-tip and really load that sucker up with a lot of pitch black extra soft charcoal. And in fact, at one point in a little bit, I switched to uh, charcoal powder. Both work. Uh, it's just charcoal powder is quicker. And I'm just going um, using up and down motions. And I'm kind of varying those and throwing in a few angles here and there. Um, and putting no detail in this grass. All I'm worried about is putting in clumpy uh, up and down short stroke shadows and that's it. We'll modify that with some hard charcoal and a little bit of extra soft charcoal later in order to put in the illusion that there are grass blades there. But we're going to make all of this grass in this foreground with a Q-tip because it's fast and it just looks cool and we're not putting a ton of detail into it. And you can see here I want to start pulling that down from that bush and use the, the pitch black extra soft charcoal that already exists on the paper in order to transition down into the grass. I'm just moving it down into blank paper. Now I'm just going to start picking out little clumps where I want shadow to exist and just laying those in with that same Q-tip using the same technique. Up and down strokes, add a few diagonals here and there to make it look like the, the grass is leaning one way or, or the other. Then as the paper pulls off more and more charcoal from the Q-tip, those strokes will get lighter naturally and I can fill in the mid-tones with that. The big thing is here to, in, in this area is to have a, a lot of contrast between the shadows and the light spots. I'm gonna, right there I pull down the foot of that barn or the base of the barn down into the ground a little bit more. And now I'm going to grab hard charcoal, and it's the darker of my two hard charcoals. So if you work with medium pencils, this is where you'll probably use a medium pencil, even though I personally don't ever use them. And I'm just putting in little blades of grass. I'm being a little finicky here because this is where we're transitioning from a highly detailed area into an area that's not going to have as much detail, but in between when we when we start dropping detail out, this is that in-between area. So we need to have at least a little detail in there. I'll pull up a few little blades of grass and weeds that go over the face of the, the tractor shed. Uh, but those, we don't want to get heavy with them. And I'm just going to start scratching in little blades of grass over the top of these, these uh, Q-tip smudge marks that I've made. 
Now, as we get to the edges of the paper, we go further down and we go further to the left and right. We're going to do this less and less and less, and we're just kind of kind of feather out the uh, the grass itself to where it it loses so much detail that it pretty much turns into just nothing but Q-tip work. Now also remember that as we get to the bottom of this bush, there are going to be smaller plants that live on the ground uh, that are growing around it. So we can throw in a few leaves here and there to make it look like there are maybe some vines that live in that area or there's just some much smaller ground hugging plants. So we're going to throw in a few leaves that kind of poke out and catch the sun through this area to make a transition from the bush to ground plants to grass. And that'll help separate that area out a little bit more and make it look a little bit more overgrown than what we had it before. Just keep an eye on size in this area because the, the leaves that exist down here aren't going to be nearly as big as the leaves in the bush. So we want to make sure those are pretty tiny. Now we're almost to the end here, so we're going to speed this up here in just a second. Um, because we're going to be doing the same technique as we did on the left hand side. This is just detail work that I'm doing here. But all the grass is going to boil down to is just drop in splotchy shadows with a Q-tip and dark extra soft charcoal. Then drop in some blades of grass using hard charcoal and maybe you know zip a Tombow eraser over the top of it every once in a while to drop in a highlighted weed. So you'll have black weeds that are done with you know those are ones embedded in shadow with hard charcoal and then some that catch the sun a little bit better and those are done with the opposite they're done with a Tombow eraser to make it look like they're they're catching more light and we'll just finish up this area though with uh, a little bit of blending stump to make that a little smoother okay so now we're just gonna blast through this next part because it's simple this is the simplest technique ever Again, you can see what I'm doing here even if in fast motion. I'm just dropping in a bunch of clumps with Q-tips. I'm, I'm doing it with charcoal powder, but you can do this with the same splotchy technique of you know scribbling extra soft charcoal on scrap paper, loading up the Q-tip, and then transferring that to paper. Then all I'm doing is just what I talked about, dropping in little sections of grass using hard charcoal, sometimes extra soft if you need it to you know, be darker. And that's it. So when we bounce back up into the plants, this is the important part. So we're going to go back up into the face of this barn, and now we're going to get really detailed on these plants. We're going to start pulling those lines that I made further inward in order to make it look like there's a stem on this plant. We're not going to connect those two lines, the lines on the left and the line on the right. We're going to pull them in as close as we can get them without them touching and that's going to make it look like there's the illusion of a stem that exists in the middle there. We're going to do that with pretty much all these plants. And then all we're going to do once we sharpen up all these details and start defining these leaves in this area, all we're going to do is just take a blending stump and very lightly go over each one of these plants to add just a little bit of shading to them. And that's it. That's These are going to look so detailed. And really the only... Um, pain in the butt part that we've done to make them look detailed is this finicky stuff that we're doing here. These extremely uh, tedious, very, very sharp, um, very fine lines, I guess is the word I'm looking for, to define out these leaves. But then whenever we add, you know, quote unquote, collar to them or tone or shading, all we're doing is just doing a very light touch with a blending stump and that's it. So we're going to blast through this too because it's the same thing I was just doing. We're just doing it with every single plant. Man, it is tedious. There we go. We're going to drop that in with a blending stump just to add some shadow to them. As we go to the right, I don't think these are so much in shadow. Some of those are catching more light because they're starting to poke out of the barn. And all we're doing from here on out is refinement. And that's it. We're adding a little bit of detail to some grass here and there, adding a little bit of shadow to it, going back with a Tombow eraser and adding some highlights. This stuff is extraordinarily simple. The only thing we're going to slow down for here in a second is right here. So that is charcoal powder and I'm using a soft paintbrush that's normally used for like watercolor or acrylics or whatever. I'm loading that up with, uh, with charcoal powder 
and all I'm doing is brushing down over each of these boards individually in order to add about I would say it's about 25 to 50 percent darker than what I had it now don't worry about ruining detail here because charcoal powder is very fine and we'll be able to go over this with a dry paintbrush or I call it dry it's dry now um, with a clean paintbrush and we'll be able to lift a lot of this charcoal right off and on top of that you're not really losing much detail by doing this anyway even as dark as that is you'll watch here in a minute I correct that by um, getting a little bit more of the charcoal off of the brush and putting it in other places blowing it carefully um, and then I will go back in with a clean brush in a minute and just start pulling that charcoal around the paper and it will naturally get lighter as I do it. This stuff is very easy to smear. It's extremely easy to get everywhere. So be careful with it. If you don't have charcoal powder, it's fine. You can do a Q-tip, um, one that's very fuzzy and not compact. Uh, maybe a cotton ball could also work. And basically you're doing the same thing as the technique I talk about all the time. Scribble a bunch of extra soft charcoal on scrap paper. Then barely get any on the cotton ball or the fuzzy Q-tip. And then barely touch the paper and just kind of fluff a bunch of that charcoal onto the face of the barn. We're going to do this to the face of the barn. We're, we're also going to darken up very dramatically the side of the barn. And you can already tell how dark this is getting and those shadows are really starting to pop out a lot better than they did. We're going to blast through this here in a second too and just wrap up this entire barn because this does take just a bit. Look how much those shadows stick out now. Then we're just going to do a little bit of tiny refinement here and there, and bam, done. Now that uh, last photo that we're showing is the way it looks in real life. Much, much better than the way it looks on camera. Um, but that's it. I hope you enjoyed it. Um, if you have any suggestions on how I can make these more easily understandable, um, other lessons you want to learn, um, anything that can help you understand what I'm doing better, please let me know. And I, I'm just learning how to convey all this stuff myself so I could use all the help I could get. So anyway, just throwing that out there. Uh, if you know anybody who's into stuff like this, please pass the YouTube channel along. Consider the patron, or Patreon. And uh, um, I appreciate everybody who's, who's supported so far. Anyway, uh, I'm rambling again. I will see you on the next video. Thank you so much for watching.